bless you and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. All right, so to start this video, I went ahead and took the K20A3 with the K20A2 port and polished head with upgraded springs and retainers and K24 cams. Took that setup out of here to swap in the K20A2, which I got from a good friend, Yoshtun. Uh, his name's Josh, really good guy. He just gave me this engine and it was missing a few things, but I just transferred it over from the K20A3. Put a new head gasket on it, uh, new head bolts, and I took the K24 cams from the K20A3 and put them in and torqued everything down, got it all good, new timing chain, all of that good stuff, and went ahead and put that in its place and got it running, and this is what it sounds like. So as you could hear, the thing runs really well. It has the RBC intake manifold, the K24 cams. Now I didn't swap the head over from the K20A3. The K20A3 with the A2 head, it has the Type S cams in it now and that's gonna be going to Eddie. He's gonna be buying it off of me. Um, he has the D-Series Integra that my brother was ended up building and now Eddie took over. So he's gonna be putting that in a CRX, that K20A3 and probably adding boost to it or something. It'll be really cool. Um, the K20A3 is not a bad engine if you have boost, but for all motor, the only way you're gonna get some good power out of it is if you swap the pistons and rods uh, over to the Type S piston and rods and then throw the Type S head on it. So the biggest problem was the compression. But this thing runs fantastic. I went ahead and took it out for a data log run, did a few pulls, got some data log info, and here's all of that. Okay, so everything looked pretty good on the data log run. Uh, it did get a little bit leaner, but nothing too crazy. Just need to add a little bit of fuel. Eric's gonna go through and retune this thing and do all of his awesome work to it. Um, but it runs fantastic. K20A2 swap, highly recommend. This one even has high miles. I think it was over 200,000, 220,000, something like that miles. But new head gasket and cleaned it up. Uh, runs fantastic. So to me personally, miles are nothing. As long as it was taken care of, it's good to go. It doesn't have any funny noises, no knocks or anything like that. I was getting some belt squeal um, because I just need to change the belt. This belt is not good. So it squealed a little bit, but other than that, not a big deal. One of the future videos that I plan on doing is a clutch valve, which if you don't know what that is, it's you can adjust it to where it slowly releases. Even if you fully let off the pedal, it'll slowly engage. So that way you can launch good at the track and not break axles. Or you can preload by holding the e-brake up, slipping the clutch a little bit, revving it, and then once the light turns green, fully let off the clutch and put the e-brake down at the same time, and that's preload. I'm not very good at preloading, so I'm gonna do a clutch valve. Um, this is used by a lot of the pros. Eric's eight second car has one, so it works pretty well. But the CV axles are on the weaker side. I mean, they're brand new, but they just like to snap because they're tiny. And without swapping all the Type S stuff on, I'm probably just going to keep breaking them until I upgrade the axles. Insane Shaft sells some for 500 bucks, but since I'm moving and everything else, I don't have that money to spare. Um, but yeah, it's definitely making some progress for sure. And also got new jack. So this jack here I've had since 2015 and it has been a really good jack. It's just, it's not low enough, so I had to get a low profile, so I got this Daytona. That's a Harbor Freight jack from 2015, and it still works perfectly fine. It's had a lot of use and a lot of builds, and I've lifted things that I shouldn't have with that, and it still does perfectly fine. Just needs a little bit of hydraulic fluid, and it's good to go. But I had to get another one, a low profile, and this one works absolutely awesome. Highly recommend it. 
Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to get you guys a video out explaining what's been going on with the EP3. I know I touched base a little bit with it in the previous video. If you haven't checked the video out on the MDX, please do so. That thing stops awesome now. But uh, yeah, it's definitely making progress and I can't wait to see what the future holds. It's all in God's hands. And uh, same with this move, we've already started packing boxes. I have some boxes out here that I need to pack up and stuff. I've got stuff I'm getting rid of. I'm gonna be getting rid of the paint booth and some other things. So uh, definitely keep an eye on my Instagram. I'm gonna be posting stuff there, including the ITBs, stuff like that. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening and we're trying to get some funds worked up and it's all in God's hands. That's all I got to say about it. But we're going to stay in Texas, so don't worry. We'll still be here in Texas, and we have some uh, work to do for sure. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the other videos on the channel. Sorry the content is not flowing at an incredible rate or constant videos. It's just kind of hard with the move and everything else, the neighbors being complaining about me working and stuff like that. So we're going to get out of here, and then I'm going to open up a shop and actually be able to work on other people's cars so the content will be, like, endless. So... Um, that's basically it for this video. I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Just want to get you guys caught up. And before I get off here, I just wanted to say this. Jesus died and rose again in three days for you and I. And all you have to do is repent and trust in him and you'll be saved. It's really that simple. Everyone's getting so religious about it and overcomplicating it. This and that has to be this and that. Seek first the kingdom and the rest will be added. But that's basically it. I'm going to go ahead and get off here and always remember this. Jesus loves